Hello and welcome to the part four. Um, in this part, what we're going to do, we are actually going to replace our uh, template um, spheres that we've created in the previous videos with some VFX. Um, also, we will look into post processing and just, you know, making the whole scene a little bit more nicer. OK, I've imported this texture, which I've made in one of my substance designer videos. So feel free to go through that video if you want. If not, then I'll just put that texture in the description. There will be a link to my uh, Google Drive so you can down download it. Uh, this will be a zip file because I'm going to I want to include all the scripts that we've done as well, just in case if you struggle with, you know, the scripting part that we've done in uh, part three of the series and you just want to have the scripts ready. Uh, if that will be the case for you, then I suggest you have to go through the part three anyway, because you have to create all those sockets and, you know, put everything into the right place in order for scripts to work. That will be like uh, animators and, you know, all the functionality uh, behind um, this, you know, mechanics that we're trying to create in Unity. OK, right. So let's start maybe by creating some uh, basic material. Uh, for our VFX. So I'm going to say template um, VFX. And that will be universal render pipeline particles and unlit. I'm going to change it to be transparent. Mm, and I'm just going to drag this texture to be as a base. OK. Okay, cool. Uh, what's that? Is that that's like a depth fade, I suppose. Um, so the particles will be a little bit more softer when they will be interacting with the mesh, I think. Uh, but let's disable it for now. Okay, so uh, we've got the material. Now let's create a particle system. So effects particle system. I'm gonna zero its location and rotation as well. I'm just going to drag it a little bit up. Change the duration to one. Mm, let's say this is going to be our uh, projectile. So I want it to be looping. And I want it to be pre-warm as well. Um, OK, let's disable uh, the speed. There is okay. Uh, the shape we want the box with zero zero scale on it. Mm, let's add our material that we've created. So that'll be template VFX material here. Right, and I think it doesn't work mainly because this material doesn't have an, uh, an alpha channel at uh, this texture, right? So I'm just going to click on the texture and I'm going to say, let's try with alpha is transparency. OK, we doesn't have alpha. So let's say from grayscale. Right, so let's do maybe a couple tricks to get rid of that. So normally you probably want to extract the alpha um, when you're creating the texture or ideally whenever you're creating a shader. Uh, my trick is to just drag one of the channels to be an alpha rather than creating an alpha channel specifically um, for that purpose. OK, so let's maybe select the material. Um, let's enable emission. And drag this here and let's change our spawn uh, rate over time emission to maybe let's try two and um, let's change this to be random rotation um, let's add variable to the lifetime as well um, anywhere between 0 0.3 0 0.5 
maybe five. Uh, the next thing would be to maybe change the size over lifetime. And maybe let's do a variable scale. So what I'm doing, I'm holding shift and double clicking on the um, on this curve. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag it down so I can create like a random flickering effect, as you can see here. OK, I think the particles are too small. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add variable to the size as well. And now I'm going to start um, with the colors. So let's say I want my power projectile to be red. I've got some of the preset I've created before, uh, but let's just do um, one from the start. So alpha at the beginning and alpha at the end, I want it to be zero. I'm going to add um, somewhere here in the middle and change its location to 30%, another one and 70%. I'm going to get rid of this one so I can only add one color. I'm going to drag it here as well. And in the middle, let's pick maybe a different color. Something like this, OK? And I'm going to increase alpha here to 100% as well. And let's add a rotation over time, but make this a variable. so. It will be maybe from minus 90 to 90. I'm going to leave it at 5. OK, so it's a very simple system. Uh, we could add light as well, but I don't think we need it. Again, this is a placeholder, OK? Um, right, so this will be our projectile. I'm going to call it projectile, template projectile. Template projectile VFX. Right, I'm going to duplicate this. Um, move it here and disable looping. And I'm going to Instead of using a rate over time, I'm going to use burst instead. OK, I want it to be a lot faster, so I'm going to change its lifetime to something like this and slightly larger as well. And I don't want to flick it like this, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into size over time and create like a new node, something like this with some curve as well. Change its color as well to something a little bit different. Something like this. And we need impact as well. So because we've got this um, system already, I'm going to duplicate it, move it um, over here, maybe. And change its size to maybe something a little bit smaller like this and the color of it as well. Let's pick something else. And let it be, let it be red as our projectile. OK, the one thing you could do, because I think our particle systems are mm, not very saturated and that's it's because we've enabled emission in our uh, shader. OK, so you can either disable it so then you will have a, you know, a lot more saturated colors. 
but because it's a you know template that I'll be using only to demonstrate the mechanics and to see if they work I'm just going to leave it like this I mean normally you probably want to create your own shaders and so you can manipulate all those values and variables that you create um, you know in the particle system right so let's call this one template cast VFX and that one will be impact I'm gonna drag those here and you know turn them into uh, prefabs and now what we could do we could just grab our projectile impact and cast template which are spheres at the moment and simply replace them with uh, those. So let's put cast into cast template, template impact here and projectile here. I'm gonna um, disable those and save the prefabs. So the cool thing about this system now is that we've got those as a game objects right so we could simply duplicate this folder for example call it fire projectile and just replace those particle systems that we're gonna um, duplicate with uh, our new effects and add it to the uh, character so for example into the player will be a cast template and projectile template and inside of our projectile template we have to add impact okay and this is the way that we can you know, create our own effects and just replace uh, very quickly our templates um, so we can uh, yeah, create multiple of those and work on portfolio and just, you know, exploring different options for projectiles. Right. So let's see if that works. Yep. So obviously location of this is uh, incorrect and I think it's mainly because I forget to zero uh, the location so I need to open the templates again select all three of them and just zero the transform position on uh, all three I'm gonna save the prefabs again and so as you can see you know it serves its purpose of being uh, a placeholder I think okay the next thing would be to add uh, some post-processing um, so let's create an empty game object let's call it post process volume and if you have not imported the package then I suggest you go into packet manager and look here for the post process under uh, Unity assets here. Yeah, so you have to switch to Unity registry and type post process. And basically import this package. In here, we're going to type post um, let's try volume maybe. We're going to create a, a new profile. I'm going to go to post processing and I like to check if it works main, mainly with the vignette first. OK, so I'm just going to enable it and put the intensity to, let's say, 0.3. So I can see it works in my viewport, but it doesn't work in my game mode. And I think mainly because we, for, uh, we didn't add it to the uh, camera. Okay, well, we need to go to post process and select the layer, um, post process, and in the camera, we need to select post process as well. Okay, we still don't have it. Okay, and I think it doesn't work because we have to. Maybe let's try this. Let's maybe set a volume mask to post process as well. Right, so we've got the, the vignette immediately, okay, which is cool. 
Um, so let's tone down the intensity of it, maybe to something like 0.3. And um, let's see what else we can add. Let's definitely add bloom. I'm going to try two so we can get nice um, emissive bloom coming out of our character. And I think our particle system should have this uh, effect on it as well. So I'm going to tweak it real time. Obviously, obviously this is too much, but you get the idea. So I'm just going to put it on two. And um, yeah, ideally, if you want to tweak this, uh, you know, to be your particles to be a lot more uh, bloomy than I suggest uh, to do it in the shader. So you can uh, increase the in intensity of the emission. I think this is very subtle and uh, that will do. Cool, what else we can add? Let's see. We can add some color adjustments if you want. Um, and just, you know, tweak the tone mapping and everything else. But to be honest, um, I think we just need a bloom and maybe vignette, but not necessarily the vignette, but we definitely need bloom, okay? So now let's maybe save the scene and save the project as well. And I think we just got a, uh, you know, working template for our um, special effects. Um, the only one thing I want to do, I want to increase the target size because I think this zombie is just too small, um, f you know, for this, our main character. So if you put him around here and you can see, um, that seems a bit more right. And obviously, you know, those two characters are from, got different art styles and all those kind of stuff, but I suggest maybe you find something closer together. Okay, the only one thing I would change is might be the collider on our target because I think maybe it's a little bit too big. Uh, so I'm going to increase its radius to maybe something like 1.5. So now when our projector will interact with the collider, it will be, you know, a lot more closer to this uh, character. Okay. Right, so that's it. As a next thing, I suggest you build and maybe the some environment around it and uh, yeah so that will ground your effects a little bit better um, if you have any suggestions suggestions and you would like me to extend this uh, series so we could add some you know other stuff like a screen shake we can build build the environment together if you want and um, yeah if you could, like literally have any suggestions leave them in the comments below all right and uh, yeah i need i'm gonna put the texture and the scripts into the zip file and put it on my Google Drive so you can download it from the description as well. All right, so I hope this will be um, a little bit helpful and uh, definitely if you have no idea how to do it uh, yourself and um, yeah, thanks for watching.